Oh boy, Democratic Party, they're at war. They're at war with progressives, with, um, you know, anyone really that is saying, no, same old, same old, ain't going to do. And uh, President Obama now, now jumping on board, former President Barack Obama, I should say, jumping on board with this. Uh, let's see what uh, the president had to say about the, uh, what, what did he call it? The progressive firing squad, he called it. Uh, that is now uh, creating too rigid, too rigid of a political system where, you know, this is very dangerous to the neoliberal order. And this is the guy who ran as a progressive, mind you. Here we go. You worry about sometimes is a certain kind of rigidity where we say, ah, I'm sorry, this is how it's going to be. And then we start sometimes creating what's called a uh, circular firing squad. You start shooting at your allies because one of them is straying from purity on the issues. Of whom does he speak? <laughs> <laughs> Only Barack Mystery. Obama knows of whom he speaks. Um. Oh, Barack. And, you know, I got a lot of criticism over the weekend for tweeting that and basically saying, what allies are you talking about? Because I don't really view... Uh, Wall Street, uh, fossil fuel executives, big pharma executives, real estate developers, Silicon Valley, and all, all the special interests that the allies uh, Barack Obama, President Obama is talking about as my, you know, the, the people that take their money and then do their bidding. I don't really view them as my allies. I don't know about you. So President Obama who, by the way, when he's talking about this purity test and this firing squad, what exactly was he doing in 2007 and 2008 when he was arguing, rightly so, by the way, that Hillary Clinton was not pure enough as a Democrat, that she was not a pure progressive, that she was not um, fighting for the little guy, that she was, without using these words, bought off by Wall Street. Was 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 that like not a firing squad, but just like you know playing paintball? I mean, I mean Obama in a different way. I'm not equating Obama to Trump, but Obama hoodwinked people just like Trump did. Only, you know, Obama hoodwinked people to think he was progressive, and Trump kind of yeah, Trump also hoodwinked people into thinking he was progressive. But Obama primaried uh, Congressman Bobby Rush. Uh, in, I believe, 2000. I don't know if he was a congressman or a senator. I forget. In Illinois, uh, Obama primaried the Clinton political machine. Remember, 2008, it was Hillary's turn. So Obama now, as you know, a former president, is now suddenly, well, you know, we, we, we run the risk of hurt, harming our allies if they're not completely pure. You know what? You know what? I think We've harmed our real allies, which are working people, by not demanding some purity. Because when they use the word purity, let me explain what, they're actu what purity actually means. Integrity. Integrity. What, when I ask for purity, I just want politicians that are, you know, have some integrity. That say what they mean. That will follow up on their pledges. Bernie Sanders, I don't agree with Bernie Sanders on every single issue. I think Bernie Sanders has fomented a lot of this Russia hysteria, to tell you the truth. I don't love his stance on Russia. I think on foreign policy, he could be stronger. I think Tulsi Gabbard is more to the left on foreign policy than Bernie Sanders. Um, you know, there's, there's some issues that I don't think he's been completely the strongest on. So, but that doesn't mean that I don't personally like Bernie Sanders because he doesn't agree with me on every single thing. I don't think, I don't think most progressives demand you must you must fill every single box of mine we demand that you have integrity that you are actually serving us not the special interest because you cannot serve us while taking money from the very special interests that are oppressing us and when i say us i'm talking about, i'm talking as a white semi-privileged man i'm not a black person that has been way worse affected by global imperialism and the United Corporations of America, or, a, or you know, a poor white, per white, poor white working person. There's a lot of people watching that have had it worse than I have. I grew up in a, 
mid, I, yeah, like straight middle class family. Um, you know, I've had struggles, but not anywhere near the people that I have met and covered have. So, you know, I think Barack Obama basically maybe somewhere along the line when he was a community organizer was progressive. But the minute you start taking meetings with Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, and by the way, Barack Obama, his poll numbers, if you look in 2007 and 2008, he was far behind uh, Hillary Clinton. It was when Barack Obama started doing auditions for Wall Street in in behind closed door meetings and basically singing the tune for Wall Street that he'd be for them. And Wall Street executives kind of put, uh, put, out a, put out an hypothesis back then to candidate Obama. What if, uh, you know, there was a recession, they called it? Or, you know, some banks caused a problem. You know, would you bail us out? And Barack Obama said, well, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a supporter of the uh, financial industry. Uh, we, you know, we can't let you guys fail. Then all of a sudden, the money started flooding in. And I didn't know at the time, I wasn't as politically aware then as I am now, that he took more money at that time in 2007, 2008, than anyone, any candidate had ever taken from Wall Street. So Barack Obama is now basically, and he's not saying it, but who he's talking to is Bernie Sanders. Who he's talking to is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ro Khanna, uh, uh, the left. When I say the left, I mean the progressive left, because the left is, is a you know, conflated term. So then you have this. House Democrat campaigns ar- campaign arm nears war with liberals over primary fights because we know that the DCCC has now cut off the head of the snake. They've said if you're doing business with the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez type campaigns, you're done. Our business with you is forever done. Talk about democracy, right? The House Democratic campaign arm is nearing open warfare with the party's rising liberal wing as political operatives close to Speaker Nancy Pelosi try to shut down primary challenges before what is likely to be a hard-fought campaign next year to preserve the party's shaky majority. Progressive Democrats were infuriated last month when Representative Sherry Bustos of Illinois, the chairwoman of the campaign arm, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, moved to protect centrist incumbents by formally breaking committee business ties with political consultants and pollsters who go to work for primary challengers. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of New York, who owes her seat to a successful primary challenge, went so far as to encourage her 3.8 million Twitter followers to pause their donations to the campaign committee in protest. She also started a fundraising push on her official Twitter account for representatives Johanna Hayes of Connecticut, Katie Hill of California, and Mike Levin of California. That initiative... Ms. Ocasio-Cortez said on Twitter, raised 30000 in roughly two hours. She also helped raise money for Representative Katie Porter of California and Lauren Underwood of Illinois. The open hostilities are just the latest in the rising tensions between an experienced party establishment focusing on what is possible in the short run and a group of young liberals chafing at such restraint. House Democrats have divided over single-payer Medicare for All versus incremental legislation to bolster the Affordable Care Act and over Ms. Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal versus less ambitious climate change policies. Skip it around. Ms. Bustos' rule prohibits Democratic consultants and vendors working for a primary challenger to an incumbent from receiving work from the committee. It comes as ardent liberal organizations like Justice Democrats, emboldened by a pair of high-profile wins in 2018, Representative Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts and Ocasio-Cortez, are aggressively gearing up to challenge centrist or old-line Democrats with liberal candidates. In the latest swipe in a fight that has erupted into open hostilities, a coalition of progressive groups on Friday introduced an online database of go-to vendors for insurgent candidates emblazoned with the heading, despite the DCC's DCCC's bullying, we're still going to work on primaries. Quote, we reject the DCC's attempt to hoard power, which will only serve to keep the talent pool and Congress itself disproportionately white and male. Maria Urbina, the national political director for Indivisible, a progressive, uh, a progressive grassroots group said of the campaign committee, incumbents who engage fully with their constituents shouldn't fear primaries and shouldn't rely on the national institutions like the DCCC to suppress challenges before voters, voters ever have a say. 
Quote, I support the notion that the primary purpose of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is to elect Democrats in tough districts so we could either win with the, win the majority or hold a majority, said Hakeem Jeffries of New York's uh, the number four Democrat. Whew! I support the notion that the primary purpose of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is to elect Democrats in tough districts so we could either win the majority or hold the majority. Here you have... Basically, the Democratic Party saying, uh, vote blue no matter who. If you dare challenge our allies, as Barack Obama calls them, i.e. incumbents, many of whom have been in there for two, three terms, most of whom take the very money that progressive populist, the progressive populist explosion happening right now is against. That's why Bernie Sanders has such support. That's why Ocasio-Cortez has such support. They don't take that money. By the way, Bernie Sanders has raised more money than any other candidate. Average dollar donation, 20 bucks. $20. And he's raised, it's more now, $18.2 million in the first 41 days of his campaign. So the Democratic Party is essentially saying, we don't care about your exploding progressive movement. Uh, We don't care what the polls say on the Green New Deal, on Medicare for All, on uh, free public college, on ending private prisons, ending wars, uh, could go on. We don't care. We care about electoral victories, even though the very strategy that we're embracing now of just, you know, stick with the same crony Democrats has lost over a 1,000 seats in 10 years. The only reason that the Democratic Party was able to retake the House wasn't because people are just suddenly embracing, you know, neoliberal centrism. A, you had a wildly unpopular president in Donald Trump. B, I mean, just look at the map. You had a a ton, ton, uh, way more female candidates, uh, and many ran on progressive policies. But the main reason was the Trump wasn't because people are just loving, um, you know, neoliberalism all of a sudden. And by the way, the the demographic that voted most in the midterms that favored the Democrats were the same people that helped elect Trump, those suburban moms, those suburban women who now have turned against Trump in large numbers. So the Democratic Party is basically saying we don't care about the working people, we don't care about millennials, we don't care about older progressives, we don't care what you have to say, fall the fuck in line. And I just got demonetized to make the point. Can't curse on YouTube, you get demonetized. So leave a super chat if you, if you can. To the point now that you're basically, I mean, you're, you're rigging the rules, you're trying to rig the rules by saying, no, 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 you can't work. If you're a digital consulting firm or you're a fundraising firm or you're a social media firm or fill in the, fill in the types of companies that work with candidates, you can't work with a challenger. Even if the challenger, you know, let's say the challenger was a veteran. Let's say the challenger is a nurse. Let's say the challenger is a teacher because those radical progressives want health care for all. Can't we don't support that. Those radical progressives are fighting for the environment that's in, literally up in flames in many places. Not only is this a terrible, terrible, terrible on, on the merits strategy by the Democratic Party, oh, the optics. When you're trying to say Trump is the most corrupt president of all time, when you're trying to say Trump is basically, you know, an oligarch and a plutocrat and hoodwinked America, while you on your side are basically saying, no money, you cannot put your, you cannot give your money to anyone challenging the democratic corporate neoliberal order. That is why Trump won in the first place, because the opposition to Trump was a corporate consultant clad, poll, poll driven, Everything out of her mouth came from polls and consultants. Robot. 
And by the way, this rule would not only basically uh, take Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's campaign out by the knees, could have taken Barack Obama's campaign out by the knees if you broadened it out to presidential politics because they could do that too down the road and say any primary, any, you know, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say there was a President Kamala Harris and you had a challenge to her, let's say, I don't know, Tulsi Gabbard, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, what's next? You're going to say any vendors that work for the primary challenger to the, pre- the Democratic corporate president? The Democratic Party, they, 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 they see where the winds are going, but they don't care where the winds are going because they would rather lose while still taking the money than win with integrity because you can't teach old dogs new tricks, right? So Nancy Pelosi, she don't want to run on small dollar donations. The Sherry Bustoses, Bustoses of the world, the, the Stenny Hoyers, the Dick Durbins, they don't want to change the program and suddenly be like progressive and be championing uh, policies that the majority support because then they would have to basically have, you know, a long string of breakups with the very special interests that have bought them full body for years, for decades. And they're, de- they, they're not programmed to actually run on populism. They're not programmed to actually run on a small dollar engine. They don't see its validity. They don't see its effectiveness. And they don't see that this is actually the way to win. Let me tell you something. If the election were held today and the Democratic Party rigged it and it was Joe Biden, Trump would win re-election. Same goes for Kamala Harris. Same goes for Amy Klobuchar, Kirsten Gillibrand, Cory Booker, and Beto. I stand on trees. I stand on bars. I stand on your head without any policy or work. I don't know if you saw pictures out there that he was in Iowa to a pretty small crowd standing on a broken tree top or a tree stump. As the DCCC works to basically block out the ocasio Cortezes of the world, they're still raking in the corporate lobbyist money. This is from Sludge. Corporate lobbyists are raising an in- increasing amount of money for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee at a time when the House Democratic's campaign arm is taking fire f- from the left for its efforts to freeze out primary challengers. Progressives have roundly criticized the DCCC for its plans to not conduct business with political vendors that work for candidates who plan to challenge incumbent Democrats. Representative Rokana said the new policy could have prevented him from winning his congressional seat. Freshman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said the DCCC's vendor policy would empower lobbyists because voters will have one less av- avenue to pursue change. The DCCC raised nearly $19 million in the first two months of this year, more money than it had raised by this point last election cycle, and the committee is relying more heavily on corporate lobbyists to collect checks. Lobbyists whose clients include health care, oil and gas, and coal interests raised almost 440000 for the DCCC in January and February. The FEC records show many of their clients oppose progressive priorities like a Medicare for All health care system, a Green New Deal, to, or a Green New Deal to mitigate climate change. I do not take money from corporations, PACs, or lobbyists, Conda said in an email. The DCCC should not either. DCCC spokesperson did not respond to questions, of course. So these must be the allies uh, former President Barack Obama is talking about. Must be the allies he's talking about. We don't want a firing, firing squad on the candidates and the DCCC, our allies, you know, making love to fossil fuel companies and pharmaceutical companies and real estate developers and Wall Street. Let's take the firing squad to the Republicans doing that. And don't get me wrong. Democrats are better on some things. Uh, female reproductive rights, you know, they're not as outwardly Islamophobic, uh, banning religions. So, you know, objectively, I could say they're better on some things. But economically, yeah, I mean, you get what you get. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. 
Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.